In today's Gospel reading from the 10th chapter of John, we hear of Jesus making a winter visit to Jerusalem's temple during the Feast of Dedication. In other words, Jesus is celebrating Hanukkah. And in order for me to share the good news of God this morning, I want to tell you a little bit about the Hanukkah story. Now you know that the Jewish people throughout their history had experienced occupation and oppression by various foreign powers and empires. Jesus and his contemporaries, we know, struggled under the oppression of the Roman Empire. But 165 years before Jesus was born, another empire controlled the land of Judea and the holy city of Jerusalem. It was an empire centered in Syria. Historians call it the Seleucid Empire. And the emperor of the Seleucid Empire was this guy named Antiochus Epiphanes, which might not mean too much to you as a name, but listen, Epiphanes, like our word epiphany, means revelation. And Antiochus Epiphanes believed himself to be the very incarnation of Zeus, the most supreme of Greek gods. He had a particular resentment for the Jewish people precisely because they, unlike any other territory they invaded, would not worship him as Zeus. So Antiochus ended up trying to outlaw Jewish religious practices, trying to corrupt Jewish communal and religious life. Well, the last straw in this campaign of Antiochus was to set up a giant statue of Zeus in front of Jerusalem's temple. And there, he sacrificed a pig on the altar. That, as you can imagine, was the last straw. And one man named Judas Maccabeus, with his brothers and with the people of Jerusalem and Judea, led a revolt against this emperor. After years of fighting, the Seleucid Empire was driven out of Judea. And to celebrate, the Jews reconsecrated and rededicated their temple, which had seen such a horrible desecration. So Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication, came to be in that way, to celebrate this victory over a man and his empire who wanted to be God. So in today's Gospel reading, Jesus is in Jerusalem, celebrating Hanukkah, and he makes right there in the porticos of the temple court this insane statement the Father and I are one. Right there in the midst of this feast, which is celebrating, undoing, and overthrowing a man who said, Zeus and I are one, and Jesus is saying, the Father and I are one. So yes, to my ears, and I hope to yours, you realize how absolutely nuts this sounds. And the people who were surrounding him there in the temple court realized that he indeed was being very crazy. He was indeed agitating and dangerous. So heads are turning and voices are rising and people start to pick up rocks in order to stone Jesus. The action, the anger is escalating and I want to freeze the action right there. Precisely at this point, when crowds get out of control and anger turns into uncontrollable rage, the writer of John's Gospel appreciates passionately held views. Because John's Gospel has a lot of black and white language, very cut and dry, very we are good and they are evil language, John's Gospel weaves into it in very subtle ways circumstances which we as Christians must learn from. Even today we hear Jesus saying, well, I know my sheep. You're not of my sheep. My sheep will not perish. And it's not difficult to figure out what will happen to those who are not. I think we can appreciate 
the tension that's created in this very black and white view, this very cut and dry view of reality as Americans, because frankly this is part of our political and cultural discussion all the time. People with totally opposite views in our country get together, they bang heads together. Oh yes, many people might try for tolerance and compromise, but you know there's always people in our culture, maybe some of us and some issues in this room, who say we will not budge. We will not compromise. There's only one way to go. So for just a moment, let's honor that fact. The inability to budge. The inability, the absolute defiance of any other reality. And for just a moment, let's see that this gospel reading today, which is still frozen in mid-action, is between a Christian understanding and a Jewish understanding of reality. Now, the Christian understanding that Jesus and the Father are one still holds, still on the table. But so is the honesty that Jesus' claim is very difficult to consider. It almost sounds crazy. It's almost impossible to believe. Because when Jesus says what he says, when and where he says it, he does sound crazy and dangerous. So John's Gospel, even though it seems very sure of its message, makes room for the deep challenges of faith in Jesus. Okay, let's unfreeze the action. People are gathered around Jesus. They've got rocks in their hands. They're ready to kill him. And this is what happens next. Jesus replied, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these are you going to stone me? They answered, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, though only a human being, are making yourself God. Jesus answered, is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If those to whom the word of God came were called gods, and the scripture can't be annulled, can you say that the one whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world is blaspheming because I said I am God's son? If I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Then they tried to arrest him again, but he escaped from their hands. Well, I have bad news and I have good news about what I've just read. 